Hi, I'm Professor Steve Rowe and welcome to Real Paleontology, where you can get your paleo fix from a real paleontologist, me. And today we're looking at the big fish, Megalodon. Is this the super predator of super predators? The absolute super predator king? Certainly many people think so. I'm going to give you my opinion on this question later on in this video. And I think I'm pretty well qualified to answer it. I'm the guy who estimated the often cited maximum bite force of this beast way back in 2008 in this paper here. How hard can a great white bite? Now bite force isn't everything, but it's definitely important if we're trying to determine whether something is a true card carrying super predator. Before we go any further, we need to consider the question of just how is a super predator defined? A common textbook definition is of a predator that is at the highest trophic level within its ecosystem, basically at the top of its food chain. A second caveat is that it must be a hypercarnivore, that is, a species that obtains a great majority of its sustenance from meat. Another is that it has no natural predators of its own. And lastly, a true super predator is a species that regularly preys on species that are larger than it. Also, we need a bit more background and an update on the latest science published on the big fish. And I must say there's been quite a flurry of recent activity in this space. Firstly, as many of you will know, Megalodon was thought to be closely related to the white shark and placed in the same genus, Carcharodon. But it's now clear that they're only distantly related. So it's now placed in the genus Otodus. Its proper scientific name then is Otodus megalodon. Megalodon lived from around 23 to 3.6 million years ago, and its fossils, mostly teeth, have been found all over the world in temperate to subtropical latitudes. Now, perhaps the single most controversial subject regarding megalodon is its size, and size matters. This has been a hot topic ever since it was first discovered. The great majority of estimates to date have been based on teeth. This is because, like all sharks, megalodon's skeleton was made of cartilage, which is only very rarely preserved in the fossil record. Unsurprisingly, estimates based on teeth are a bit all over the shop. Even within the last decade, estimates of maximum weight range from less than 50 to over 100 metric tons, and estimates of maximum length from about 15 to 24 metres. Recently, in 2022, Jack Cooper, John Hutchinson and colleagues published this paper. The extinct shark Otodus megalodon was a transoceanic super predator. I was a co-author on this paper too, albeit with a very minor role. Jack built a 3D computer model of megalodon using this largely complete vertebral column from Belgium and the full body CT scan of a juvenile great white shark. Like all models, there are assumptions made here, but I reckon that these data represent a firmer basis for estimation than just teeth. The result was an estimate of around 16 metres in length and 61 and a half tonnes in weight. Anyway, from this model, Jack also calculated our Megalodon's average cruising speed to be around five kilometres per hour, which is higher than any living shark, its gape size at around 1.8 metres, and its stomach volume at almost a cubic metre. Comparisons with living sharks then allowed the prediction of Megalodon's maximum prey size and its energy requirements. Jack reckons that this 61 tonne megalodon could eat a decent sized kill whale in just five bites and was certainly capable of killing the largest species of whale around at the time, although there may be at least one exception to this and we'll discuss it later. Another study published in 2022 by Emma Karst and friends based on nitrogen isotope data found that megalodon occupied an extremely high trophic position basically that it sat at the very top of a very, very long food chain. This suggested that it didn't just eat big prey, like filter-feeding baleen whales, but that it also ate other predators, e.g. other sharks and toothed whales. Altogether, these results paint a picture of a truly monstrous shark that could fuel up on a single massive feed before undertaking long-haul voyages over vast distances. Now, even more recently, some of these results have been contested in a couple of publications. In 2023, Kenshu Shimada and friends published this paper, wherein they concluded that Megalodon was not a fast cruiser, with an average speed of just 2 kilometres per hour, 
way lower than JAX5. This was based on analysis of the shapes of denticles in the shark's skin. Denticles are basically tiny tooth-like structures that give shark skin the texture of sandpaper. But hang on, hold your horses. In a bit of rapid-fire scientific tit-for-tat, just a few weeks ago, in this paper here, Shimato, Sayamo and colleagues have come back with another denticle-based study that came up with a cruising speed even higher than the 5 km per hour suggested earlier by Jack. So the fast cruising megalodon is back on the table. Now, most recently, Philip Stearns and colleagues have fat-shamed our 2022 megalodon, arguing that it should be longer and slimmer. Essentially, they think that our estimate of length and weight based on the Belgian vertebral column underestimated the beast's length because we underestimated the number of missing vertebra. They further reckon that we shouldn't have used the white shark as a basis for our calculations. However, Stearns and others also used the white shark as a basis for their determination that we had underestimated the number of vertebra in Megalodon. Jack Cooper, the lead author on our paper, has an objection here. He reckons that this is circular reasoning because Stern's entire argument hinges on the assumption that Megalodon had an identical skeletal structure to a white shark. I agree with Jack. Another point is that Stern's and colleagues don't actually come up with any figures or suggestions as to how long and skinny Megalodon might actually have been. They argue that Megalodon was longer and skinnier than any previous predictions, but they give no indication of how much longer or how much skinnier. Their ultimate conclusion is that they don't know. So it might be a lot longer and skinnier, or maybe not so much. By definition then, this reconstruction here, or any other based on their findings, must be entirely guesswork. So, where are we now? Well, even if we accept Stern's argument, then maybe it doesn't make much difference at all. A longer skinnier megalodon could be just as heavy and require just as much food as a shorter fatter one. And if we accept the most recent evidence for a fast cruising megalodon, then it doesn't really affect the conclusions drawn in our 2022 paper at all. Bottom line is, I think that the weight of evidence still points to megalodon as a huge transoceanic super predator that sat at the top of a very long food chain regardless of whether it was a giant short fat fish or a giant long skinny one. This brings us to the question of whether Megalodon really was the greatest super predator of all time. Now, before we go any further, one thing that I need to note is that size, although obviously important, isn't necessarily the most important for determining whether a species is a super predator. The question we are asking here isn't simply which predator was the biggest baddest ever, or which would most likely win in a hypothetical fight to the death. These are different questions that might well give you different answers. But I know the question of which was the biggest baddest predator ever is one that a lot of people are interested in. So let's have a go at answering it. Firstly, the question of size. Was Megalodon the biggest predator ever? Well, there were a few contenders for this title. There have been some very big predatory mosasaurs, pliosaurs, ichthyosaurs, and marine mammals that have terrorized the world's oceans over the last couple of hundred million years or so. But among these, very few were even as large as the largest predator alive today, the sperm whale, Physeter macrocephalus. An average male sperm whale is around 16 meters long and 45 metric tons in weight. One 18 metre long male reportedly weighed in at 57 metric tonnes, and at least eight individuals are known to have exceeded 20 metres in length. One may have even exceeded 24 metres. We don't have weights recorded for these 20 metre plus individuals, but it's clear that in terms of size, the sperm whale is certainly at least comparable to, or larger than, Megalodon. Among fossil reptilian predators, I think that there are only a couple of species that clearly approached or perhaps exceeded Megalodon in terms of size, and both are gigantic ichthyosaurs. The best known is Shoniosaurus sicaniensis. The maximum estimate for this beast is 21 metres in length and 81.5 metric tonnes. 
But just a couple of months ago, another new ichthyosaur species was described, Ichthya titan sevenensis. The authors claim that this was around 25 metres long, although the fossil remains themselves are pretty scrappy. Regardless, though, these two biggest ichthyosaurs are right up there with Megalodon and the sperm whale, and may well have grown to be bigger than either. Now, among these contenders for biggest, baddest super predator ever, we can take the sperm whale out of the equation immediately. There's no way it could have stood up to Megalodon, and there's no way it's a super predator. It's simply not what we call macroraptorial. In short, it doesn't take prey that were large compared to its own body size. I'll explain in a little more detail. Sperm whales are awesome animals, but they concentrate on relatively small prey, particularly squid, and even giant squid are small compared to an adult sperm whale. Another important indicator here is that the sperm whale has relatively tiny, puny little jaws, although I don't think its bite force has been estimated yet, there can be absolutely no doubt that it was small for an animal of its size, and certainly it is way below that of Megalodon. Lastly, it simply can't be considered a super predator because at least one species is known to prey on it, the killer whale or orca. But with respect to the two giant ichthyosaurs that I mentioned, things are far less clear cut. It's way unlikely that either could have been preyed upon by any other contemporaneous species. There was just nothing around that was big enough. But until recently, I would have ruled both of these biggest ichthyosaurs out straight away on the simple basis that neither were macroreptorial. Ichthyosaurs have relatively long, slender snouts with small teeth, and the general consensus has been that they were not predators on relatively large species. While bite forces have not been estimated, I have little doubt that Megalodon would have had a way more powerful bite than either of them. However, just recently, in 2020, Da Yong Jiang and colleagues published this. They found evidence that a 5 metre long ichthyosaur swallowed the entire trunk of a 4 metre long thalatosaur, another kind of marine reptile. It's possible that this animal was scavenged, although the authors argue otherwise. If it's true, then maybe a 20 metre plus long ichthyosaur weighing in at 80 tonnes or more could have swallowed a megalodon whole. There's one other real contender for biggest, baddest ever, in my view. This bad boy here, the giant macroraptorial sperm whale, Liviatan melvillii. And Liviatan is particularly interesting because it lived at the same time as Megalodon, and it's very likely that the two cross paths on occasion. Liviatan was first described here in 2010 on the basis of a partial skull found in Peru. Its huge teeth are probably the biggest teeth ever found, some over 30 centimetres or a foot long. Since then, teeth of similar size and shape have been found at various other locations around the world, including Australia. They may or may not be from the same species, but they are definitely from giant macroraptorial sperm whales. How giant, you might ask? Well, pretty darn giant. The estimates put Liviatana between 13 and a half and 17 and a half metres in length and up to 57 tonnes in weight. This certainly puts it within the same ballpark as Megalodon. But because Liviatan is only known from skull material, these estimates are pretty loose. What I think is absolutely certain, though, is that Liviatan had a tremendously powerful bite. The shape of its skull and the size of its jaws and teeth leave no doubt about this, although its actual bite force has yet to be predicted. Bite force has been predicted, though, for another macroraptorial sperm whale, Zygophyster. In 2022, Emmanuel Perry and colleagues predicted the bite force of this species coming up with a maximum of around 10,000 newtons. But Zygophyster was much smaller than Liviatan. If we scale this up to account for the greater size of Liviatan, then we get a figure of around 60,000 newtons. But Liviatan had a far more robust skull than Zygophyster, so I reckon this is likely an underestimate. How does this bite compare to that of Megalodon? 
Well, in my 2008 paper, I predicted a bite force of 108,000 newtons for a 48-ton megalodon, based on modelling of a white shark skull. So, on the basis of what we currently know, megalodon is maybe winning in the bite force stakes. Certainly, it has the highest published bite force estimate of any species. But until more material becomes available for the big ichthyosaurs, as well as Leviathan, and solid estimates are calculated, I'm not entirely confident that Megalodon actually was the biggest biter. Regarding Leviathan, there's another factor we need to consider here. Was it a social predator? Certainly its closest living relative the sperm whale is, as is the world's current marine super predator, the killer whale. If Leviathan was a social predator, then Megalodon would have been at a severe disadvantage. I suspect that even a very large Megalodon would have hot-footed it into the distance if it sensed the presence of a pod of giant macro-raptorial sperm whales with 30 centimetre long teeth. It's even possible that pods of Leviathan may have preyed on Megalodon in order to take out its massive and super nutritious liver. Some orca are certainly known to do this to great white sharks today. And even big white sharks swim away like hell if they sense the presence of killer whales. So, was Megalodon the biggest, baddest predator of all time? Well, on the balance of available evidence, I'd have to say that it absolutely remains in the mix alongside the two gigantic ichthyosaurs and leviathan. But at present, to pick any one of these over the others would require that we accept as yet unproven predictions as fact. As to the question of which of these four marine giants, including Megalodon and Libyatan, hold the title of world's ultimate all-time super predator, the answer, in my opinion, is none of them. And I'll explain why. Getting back to our super predator criteria, it may be that they were all at the top of their respective food chains with no natural predators, and it's certain that they were all hypercarnivores, but they all fail on our final criterion. That is, they did not regularly prey on animals larger than themselves. And we can be pretty darn certain of this because although they may all have technically been macroraptorial, there simply were no contemporaneous prey species that were much larger than any of them to prey upon. In the case of Megalodon and Leviathan, we need to remember that from the early Miocene to the Pliocene, very few species of whale exceeded even 12 metres in length. And true giants such as today's blue whale didn't emerge until later still. In fact, many researchers attribute the extinction of Megalodon to a reduction in the numbers of the medium-sized whales that were their preferred prey. So there's my conclusion. Megalodon may or may not have been the world's all-time biggest, baddest predator. To me, the jury's still out on this there are at least three other viable contenders for the title. But it was definitely not the world's all-time ultimate super predator. In fact, I would argue that it is not a super predator at all. Of course, I fully expect that some people will energetically disagree with me on this, and that's fine. If you do disagree, then I'd like to know why. I'm always open to other arguments so put them in the comments section below. And if you like this video, then please like and subscribe. Next week, I'm going to look at what is probably the most famous fossil creature of all time, the Tyrant Lizard King. We're going to delve into the latest science on Tyrannosaurus rex. One last thing, a mate of mine just published this book. If you're into sharks, it's definitely worth a read.